important. Uh, banning banning masses uh, can be managed either conservatively or by simple resection of the mast, uh, depending on the patient's symptoms and um, the fitness of for surgery. So malignant masses require radical treatment and um, a woman with a bending annexal mass should not undergo uh, inappropriate cancer surgery. So uh, it is our job and it is our mission to differentiate the uh, malignity and the benignity. First, uh, ultrasound is the first uh, step and just to remember that there is a dynamic exam and uh, it is important to, uh, to use this uh, dynamic uh, characteristic to help you uh, to precise the nature of the mass. There is two main situations with ultrasound. The first one is typical masses and the second one, and it is the problem and it will require MRI. It is in the terminated uh, annexon mass. So first situation, it is the uh, easiest situation, typical US lesion. Uh, the three main uh, lesions are simple cyst, hemorrhagic cyst, endometrioma, and dermoid cyst. Here you have a pseudo solid mass. You perform the Doppler, and what is it? The typical luteal cyst. Just a little movie to precise that when you have this aspect in fishnet, it is called fishnet. Here is, is it is endometrioma, and uh, here you have the typical luteal cyst with all those little uh, parietal uh, lesions with no Doppler uh, signal. It is typical of luteal cyst. So you don't need to perform MRI when you are in front of this typical pattern. Another situation with uh, this movie. Um, a patient with acute pelvic pain and you find this cyst, this kind of cyst and you uh, manage the exam with the other hand and you do palpation, you do compression on between the ovary and <coughs> the cyst and you can see that there is a separation, they are separated, ovary and the cyst so what is it? Okay. So it's a parovary typical cyst and there's no matter, there's no need surgery for this kind of cyst and no need to perform MRI. How is for potential malignity or when you are in front of uh, complex masses? It is solid cystic masses, uh, diameter greater than 4 cm. The size is important, but the size is uh, quite big. It is, uh, um, uh, it is helpful to um, suppose the malignity. Uh, the presence of irregular non fatty solid vascular arteries greater than uh, per 3 mm, and the presence of solid uh, elements, papillary projection, and thick wall and septa greater than 3 mm in cystic lesions. So the second situation when you perform ultrasound, and uh, it is uh, the aim of this presentation, is to precise uh, the different ultrasound situation when you have to perform a mobile. First question, is it a uterine or agnexal, agnexal mass? And here you have an example of MRI, uh, which was performed for uh, indeterminate, indeterminate agnexal mass. You have the right ovary here. You, you search the second ovary and you find it here. So what is this big mass with hypersignal T2? It is quite difficult to say, to differentiate if it is from uterus or from ovary. So you can do perfusion, you can do um, injection of gadolinium, and you can uh, see the different curve. And you can see that this curve of the solid element of the mass is quite parallel to the myometrium curve. So probably the origin of this mass is from the uterus wall and it was a subserous 
layer myoma with necrotic um, remaniment. The ovary location is important to know, to know the normal anatomical uh, place, location, and when you perform MRI, uh, you, can, um, you can use the sagittal plane uh, to locate the ovary, and the normal, uh, normal ovary is located between the external and the internal uh, iliac uh, artery, like you see here, and you can see on this line, on this uh, anatomical uh, slide, when you find an ovary with a hypersignal border uh, ovary, with all these hypersignal T2 follicles, you can say that it is a normal uh, ovary uh, concerning the pattern and concerning the location. The different types of ovarian tumors, it's important to know them, to differentiate them uh, when you talk with your surgeon, surgeon's <coughs> colleagues. But it's not the point, um, it's not our mission to preside the histological origin from the, of the masses. Uh, it is very difficult and we are, no, we are not anatomical pathologists. So our, on our um, mission is just to uh, say to the surgeon if it is quite malignant or quite benign. So histological origin is, is beside the point. Technical proposal for uh, MRI is, um, is always our classical protocol. Uh, as we uh, call it in Bachelon Center with our famous technicians like Bruno here. We have a classical um, protocol, sagittal uh, T2, axial T2, axial T1 with and without outside. And when you have a complex uh, anexal mass, you have to perform diffusion and uh, perfusion. So, the second question is, what are the morphological criteria? What is the, the signal of the mass? And the perfusion is helpful to um, propose a scoring of the mass. And Isabelle Thomasin, who is radiologist in Tenor Hospital in Paris, uh, did a great job uh, in radiology. You can find her articles. And she tried to uh, precise um, typical management uh, with the help of the scoring of the mass. And I propose to present you uh, the scoring, uh, which can be um, interesting for the future. So the classical morphological criteria, you know them in MRI. Malignancy is quite uh, frequent when it's superior to 4 cm. So I mean, here you have uh, the annex error scoring system uh, uh, that is quite uh, complex when you see it like this. But I'm going to try to present it um, quite uh, simply. The, the important point is to know these uh, three kind of patterns in perfusion ovarian tumor. You have the top one, which is here. Uh, you have the curve and the slope is quite regular, like you have here. The type two, uh, which means that the perfusion and the mass is supposed to be borderline, just between the malignancy and the, benign the benignity. And you see that the slope is uh, quite um, different than the, the, the first one. And when you have an invasive mass, uh, the perfusion is quite, uh, it is very high, with a very high intensity uh, after perfusion. So remember the three types of curves, because it will be helpful uh, to precise the origin of the adexal mass. The first element is uh, the, uh, the element that we will call solid tissue. Uh, it summarizes the vegetation, the solid portions, and the irregular second septa. All these kinds of solid components 
are summarized by solid tissue. Five MRR criteria for ruling out malignancy in most venom case are those uh, five elements. And when you have purely cystic mass, purely endometrial mass, purely fatty mass, low T2 and low uh, diffusion, diffusion signal, you can say that it's bending, quite bending, and it's in score 2. Of course, after a perfusion, you have the absence of all enhancement after gadolinium. So when you, are, when you are in front of this situation, you can be quite uh, cool and you can say that it's bending. So, uh, first example, first situation. You have bending typical masses, as we saw just before. Here, it is a purely cystic mass with hypersignal T2, hypersignal T1. You do perfusion and there is no uh, abnormal enhancements. So you can see that there is a purely cystic mass. Uh, we can just uh, uh, follow this mass uh, without need of surgery. Here you have a typical endometriotic mass with this typical hypersignal T1 in uh, fat and without uh, fat sat with the typical shading sun, as you know, uh, it's in a T2 sequence with a typical pattern in ultrasound. You can be quite good. It is a big mass. So it is core 2. Here you have a little hemorrhagic cyst, uh, which is quite shading sign in T2, but you have liver, and it's most and, and it is more frequent the liver, the blood liver with uterus cyst than with endometrioma. So it is typical uh, bending lesions, and when you do perfusion, when you do injection.